Hallo Leute, ich bin Katja und ihr seht Deutsch für euch. So as both you and I are painfully aware, I have way too many interests to dedicate the necessary time to each one of them. And that's not a humble brag, that's a problem. So that means I kind of have to pick and choose one at a time and one of my current favorites, as my Twitter followers are very aware by now, I'm sure, is tabletop role-playing games. Which, for those of you who don't know, is basically sitting down at a table with a bunch of other nerds and playing the grown-up version of playing pretend. That just because I said grown-up, I didn't mean... I said table, not bed, okay? Anyway, it's that with a bunch of math and rules thrown into the mix so that nobody ends up throwing a tantrum when they don't get their way. Because that never happens when there are clear rules. Never. So, since this is still considered somewhat of an out there hobby, I thought I would merge these two interests of mine and bring you an episode about D&D or Dungeons and Dragons vocabulary. So, if after this you feel inspired and want to find out more about this hobby, I recommend you head on over to the YouTube channel Geek and Sundry, which I've linked in the description, and check out a show called Critical Role on there, which is just a lot of fun, as well as unbelievably inspiring, and also happens to be, in that, an ongoing game of Dungeons and Dragons. It's also what this super soft t-shirt is from. <laughs> and of course, for those of you who are actually here because of Critical Role, First of all, yay and bidet, <laughs> and I hope you can take a word or two away from this or at least recognize the occasional reference. All right, los geht's! So, when you start off, your Spielleiter, so your game master, will pick out a system for you to play. What that means is he or she decides what regeln you will use. Maybe Dungeons and Dragons, maybe Pathfinder, maybe Shadowrun, whichever it is, it's very likely that its title won't be translated into German, with, of course, the exceptions of systems that were originally German, such as Das Schwarze Auge, which in English is known as the Dark Eye, because the Black Eye just doesn't sound all that fantasy and badass. Whichever you end up picking to play, you mostly need three things. Drei Dinge. Stift, Papier, Und Würfel. And yes, I need all of those. Because what if somebody forgets their own? Or if one of them will only roll natürliche Einser? Or... Right? Anyway, you will first use your Würfel to roll up your Charakter. But before you do that, you have a few decisions to make. For example, which Volk will they be from? Will you make einen Zwerg, eine Elfe, einen Halbelf, einen Halborg, einen Halbling, oder vielleicht einen Gnom, oder sogar einen Tiefling? And yes, most of those with the exception of Zwerg and also Mensch, human, are exactly the same as in English with a more German pronunciation. And better yet, Tiefling is actually a German word to begin with. Translates to deepling. I mean, so far this is so easy even a Goliath could learn it. What? Now, the next step will be Klassen, which is basically the thing that you pick in order to know how you will kämpfen. And among these, there's also quite a few easy to remember ones. We have Barbar, Barde, Druide, Kleriker, Magier, because they use Magie. Mönch, Mönch, with an Ö, Ö, Mönch, and Paladin. And then there's the ones that are different here too. We have the strong Kämpfer, which, just like in English, just literally means fighter, a person who fights, Kämpfer. The sneaky Schurke, Schurke, which isn't the most, you know, generous translation, because it can also mean cad or scoundrel or even villain. Oops. The elegant Waldläufer, which means forest strider, Waldläufer. And the mysterious Hexenmeister, Witchmaster. Not to be confused with the Nightwish song. Oh, and not to leave anybody from Vox Machina out, the inventive Schütze, Schütze. Which really just means marksman, but gunslinger just doesn't translate well. Flintenschwinger? 
interesting tidbit that my viewers are aware of, all of these are by default grammatically male because they end in ER, which for occupations and you know basically anything that you can apply to a person is a male ending. But you can also just use female pronouns with them or if you want to be very specific, you can add on an I-N, in. So instead of a Baba, you could have a Barbarin. Or instead of a Schurke, you could have a Schurkin. Or Bardin. Etc. It's like word Lego. And now that you basically have your character lined up, you get to do Rollenspiel. Of course, some people mostly play for the Kämpfe. And in order to kämpfen, you need Waffen. Those are mostly pretty easy too. First off, we have the Schwert, which has a W in it that is pronounced, because otherwise it wouldn't have a W in it. English. Schwert. Then we have Axt, Hammer, Stab, which, false friend, usually doesn't stab. Pistole, Puff. Bogen, and the thing you use with it is not as close to English. Pfeil, Bogen, Pfeil. Armbrust, which I mostly included because its name is so funny, because Armbrust translates to arm breast, because that's what you rest it on. Armbrust. And of course, Dolch. Dolch, Dolch, Dolch. Nah, it just doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? Unless it makes me drool. Now, with Waffen in hand, you're ready to storm the dungeon and fight some monster. And yes, we usually say dungeon. We also, by the way, while we're at it, usually say session or Sitzung, which means the exact same thing. Sitzung, session. Anyway, back to Monster. Of course, first off, we have to mention the big one, Der Drache. Not to be confused with Der Drachen, because that means kite. Now, many of the monsters made up either specifically for the game or taken from mythology usually are either very close or exactly the same as in English, because, pff, I mean, why make up another made up name for something that's already made up, right? So this will be stuff like Aboleth. We just say Aboleth. Although this is of course not true for all of them and the trend is that the further you go back, the more likely it is that stuff is translated. For example, here we have the Beholder. This lovely thing here. <laughs> that in German is called a Betrachter. Beholder, Gazer. Which of course enables the same stupid wordplay that it does in English. Schönheit liegt im Auge des Betrachters. Beauty is in the eye of the Beholder. Even though it so very clearly isn't. I mean, look at that. So, where would you be in a Kampf then? Would you be charging forward, weapon in hand, yelling ANGRIFF? Or would you be gingerly stalking through the Schatten, looking for the perfect moment and the perfect Schwachpunkt in your opponent? Or maybe you would be standing at the back of the battlefield, whispering Beschwörungen. Or maybe none of that is your style and you would just be chilling playing your flöte or your geige and letting a giant purple hand do the dirty work for you. Let me know how you like to spielen. And that's it for today. Your random word of the week is die Gemeinschaft. Although for fandoms and online, we usually also just say community. Gemeinschaft. So, make sure you check out Critical Role. It's linked in the description. Also, if you want to support me, keep the show going, check out my Patreon, which is also linked in the description. And the last thing, or not the last thing, but you know, the last thing I'm going to mention that's also linked in the description is the vocab list for this episode in case you want to review. And with that, we're off. Bis dann. Tschüss. <laughs>